Welcome to Mahjong Central. My name is Michelle. On this episode of Nosh and Such, I'm going to make little pigs in a blanket because I'm going to use little smokies. If you don't like these little sausages, this might not be a good recipe for you. But if you're okay with these, this is a great recipe for Mahjong because they're finger food. They may or may not be one bite. For some people, they may be two bites. Some people pop the whole thing in their mouth. I think I take two bites, two bites, but they're not greasy. So I think this is a great recipe. My oven is ready. I just preheated it to 350 degrees per the instructions on this package. If you want to use your own dough, that's fine. I don't know how to make this kind of dough yet. I am learning how to bake, but this is a little further down the road for me. So I just use the store-bought Grands, Pillsbury Grands Crescent Rolls. I'm going to put one of these back in the fridge because you want it to be nice and cold. All right, so the first thing I do when I make this, you're going to just set that aside for a minute. You need to rinse these because they're kind of juicy and I don't really like that juice. So I always get a strainer. I got this strainer at Ikea. I really like them. I have two of them. I actually have three, but one I got somewhere else. It's like a double. This one is a single bowl and they're great for this kind of a thing or, you know, vegetables, salad, things like that. So I'm just going to cut this open and dump it in there. See that juice? It's kind of icky. Do the same here. And then rinse them just in cool water. I forgot something. I'll be right back. The other thing I do is I get a towel, a clean towel, and then you put these little smokies in the towel and dry them off because you don't want them to be wet. When, if they're wet when they come in contact with the dough, it's going to mess up the cooking. So you want them to be dry. Another thing you could do is rinse them and just let them air dry, but I don't have time for that. So I'm going to use a towel. So just get them on a towel. And just give them a good rub. They don't have to be perfectly dry. Just get as much of that off of there as you can. Okay, now I'm going to just dump these back in this strainer. And just let them continue to dry while we prepare the blankets, as it were. So the first thing that you want to do is open up this package. And anytime you open up these packages, it pops. So brace yourself. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to find the end. Okay, you see that? Right there. And just very carefully unroll it. 
it might come apart a little bit. See that little hole right there? So if that happens, just kind of press it together. You can repair it as you go. So I'm just gonna unroll this all the way across. Okay, so there it is. There are eight triangles on each little sheet of dough. So we have two, four, six, eight. And I'll show you one here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them to make them into smaller triangles to make the little blankets. I have a pizza cutter here and here's how I do it. I'm gonna show you this way from the front view for this dough and then when I do the second dough, I'll give you an overhead view. So I'm just gonna cut straight across the middle, all the way across all of the dough. Then I'm gonna cut diagonally along the pre-cut. They always come pre-cut so that there's eight pieces. So I'm just gonna go across those pre-cut lines because they do stick, even the verticals. So we've got the center cut and one diagonal cut. Now you wanna do a fresh diagonal cut. Basically, you're gonna go from lower left to upper right, all the way across. We're just basically making a bunch of mini triangles and you're gonna do that for each sheet. Now we're going to do one more cut. There's a big triangle in the middle. I think it's called an isosceles triangle. Is that the one that's the same on all sides? We want to make the other one. I forget what it's called. Isosceles. I forget, but we're going to cut it in half. So we're just going to go straight up the middle across that one big triangle. So now it's two little ones. And then we're just gonna repeat. Okay, the dough's all cut. Now, here's what you do. You wanna get a tray Make sure it's a dry. You don't need to grease it because there's butter in this dough already. And if you make your own, you'll know there's butter in it. So you don't need to do any pre preparation on your pan. And this pan is nonstick anyway, so it'll be just fine. So what you wanna do is you wanna take a piece of dough and you're gonna lay the little smoky on the long side. And then you're just gonna roll it up. Like that. You see? Now you can just leave it that way and just put it right on there. But I kind of like to tuck the ends over to the, uh, the dough right here. It just, to me, makes a more finished little package. So it looks like that. And then you're just gonna lay it on the tray. And I usually do four across, and then I just go a, a lengthwise and fill it up. This is gonna take a while. This is the only sort of challenging part. It's not even challenging, it's just time consuming. And it really doesn't even take that long but it is a bit tedious. I guess that's what we could say, it's tedious. So you just need to make all your little mini pigs in a blanket right now, just like this.
and just get them on that, get them on the pan. Okay, so just about like that. And then we're just gonna fill it up this way. And it's gonna take a minute, so I'm gonna speed this up. I guess if you consider it therapy, working with your hands like this, it could be enjoyable. And I suppose if you have little ones in the house, this might be a fun little activity for them. I'm sure they would love to help with this little project. You just make sure that they don't put their fingers in their mouth because this dough has probably raw egg in it. So you wanna make sure that they don't touch their fingers to their mouths. And plus, you don't want, you know, their little germies to get on the dough. Okay, I think that's pretty good. You don't wanna crowd them too much here. So there's the tray. I'm going to go put this on the stove. Bring this one over and I'm going to get the dough out of the fridge. Now I'm going to move you to an overhead view. Okay. So I already have a few here, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do these. If you ever have really big ones like this, you might even cut that in half. But I've got my husband and my son, my teenage son, they'll probably fight over this big guy right here. It's a big one. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and open this package up. Okay, brace yourself. All right, so you just find the end. Lay it out and just unroll it. So we're just going to cut along that pre sort of perforated vertical lines, cut the pre cut diagonal. Now, this is where you cut straight across the middle. Just like that. Then you cut diagonally from the lower left to the upper right. And it's nice if you can cut so that as you go across the middle, you hit that intersection. So, do you, so you don't end up with a teeny tiny little piece right like that in the middle. I mean, it's not wasting all that much, so it's not a big deal, but I always like to try to get through that intersection. Okay, now this is where this really big piece comes in. Remember this really big piece? This is where you go right up the middle. That's it. And then you just take the dough and roll it up. All right, we're just gonna continue the job and I will speed this up so you don't have to wait.
Oh, this is going to be a little one. You can kind of stretch out the dough if you find one that's kind of tiny, like this one. It's kind of little. So you just kind of pull it a little bit. It might have a bit of a thin blanket, but it'll at least reach through, you know, you'll at least be able to roll it up. I might have to do a little rearranging because we have extras here. I don't have any more pans. We're going to make it work. Make it fit. Okay, so now I'm just going to squeeze these in. Okay, we can get four more on there. And then I'll do the same thing on the other tray. We have four left. It'll be perfect. Last one. Yeah. All done. So then you just want to follow whatever your directions are. If you make this from scratch or follow the package, this package says heat 350 degree oven and then bake for 12 to 15 minutes. And I go on the short end 12 minutes and then check, lift one off the sheet to check the bottom to make sure you don't burn it. I have burned many of these little guys. Not good. They taste horrible. I even tried to cut the bottoms off and they just the smell just gets into the dough. So you do not want to burn them. So we're going to go 12 minutes. Okay. 12 minutes. Don't go far and come back and check after 12 minutes. Lift one up. Look at the bottom. If it's golden brown, they should be done. There's a fine line between done and burned. Trust me, I know this well. So we're just gonna wait for 12 minutes now. I guess I can clean up. We have about three minutes left. I'm gonna look real quick. Okay, we're gonna let it go just for a few more minutes. In the meantime, I wanna show you how I do sauces. So you can do whatever you want, ketchup, regular mustard, barbecue sauce, whatever. But we have to sweeten ours up with honey. So I have honey, and then here is our favorite uh, honey mustard dressing, Ken's honey mustard, and then we, we like this, KC Masterpiece original. So what I do is I just pour, there we go. Okay. Just pour however much you want. So there's like three of us here. I think we need a little bit more. All right. I think that's good. So there's the honey mustard. And then I'm going to do the barbecue. Use me while I squeeze the barbecue sauce. Now we just put in the honey. And you don't need a whole lot. I'd say if you I'd say this is probably a cup of dressing and this is probably a cup of barbecue sauce. 
Let me get those. We don't want to burn them. This is where you check them. So you just pick one up, look at the bottom. It's not done yet. That's not dark enough. And it's way too light on top. You want it to be a little more brown. See how this one is starting to get a little bit brown on top? That's what you want only more. But see the bottom? It's hardly browned at all. Five more minutes. We'll see how it goes. Now, back to this. I would say probably, well, let me measure. I usually don't follow recipes, but since I'm sharing, I should probably be as exact as I can be. So this is about how I do it. I th I'm thinking about a tablespoon of honey per cup because you don't want to overkill you know on the honey but a little bit just adds that nicety yeah I think about a tablespoon is good so I'm just going to kind of scrape that out and then we'll do no that's not going to work okay I'll do it like that for some reason, I don't have strong a strong grasp. I don't know why. My wrists and my grasp is not very strong. It really never has been. So I have a hard time squeezing things like that. So I need both hands to do stuff like that. Okay. Now... I want to show you like what happens to the honey. See that honey in there and see how bright that mustard is in there. Once you mix it up, it turns a little more golden. See, like I might put a little more honey in here. I'm going to mix up the, the barbecue sauce and see how that goes. The thing about the barbecue sauce is it's dark, so you can't really see how the additional honey changes it. So I think I'm going to put about another tablespoon. I'd say that's about a tablespoon. I'd say that's about right. Now for this one, see it's kind of turning a little more brownish. Yep, 
Yeah, that's much better. See how it's a little more golden than yellow? All right, that's it. Okay, I'm going to check those little pigs in a blanket again. Because like I said before, there's a fine line between done and burned. We're going to go another three minutes. I added another three minutes and then another five minutes. So I'm going to check it again on this five minutes period. I've got like two minutes left. And the, the little smokies kind of start to sizzle a little bit. That's when it's getting close. So you can see it's a little browner on the bottom and it's getting brown on the top. But I think just kind of pinch the dough a little bit to make sure you can kind of feel that it's cooked through. So I'd say they're almost just done. Just another minute or two. In the meantime, I have a little bowl here and I just put a towel in here and that way you could put the little pigs in a blanket in here and just kind of roll it up in the towel and it'll stay warm that way. They'll be all right at room temperature, but I kind of like them as warm as possible for as long as possible. And usually if I put it in a towel like this, it'll stay warm longer. I think we should get them out now. There they are. They look done to me. I'm going to put the other tray on the other shelf. These look done though too. Let me just check. See? They're pretty, pretty well browned on top. I'm just going to turn the oven off and stick them in there. They'll cook for just a few minutes. I'm going to eat this one. We'll do a little taste test. So I'm just going to let these cool for a little while. And they'll, they'll do a little carryover cooking as well. So that's another reason why you really, really want to watch them. See the bottom there? So I think we'll let these cool for a few minutes because that little smoky in the middle, that's going to be really hot. But I think it looks really nice. See that? Kind of golden brown. It smells really good. It smells like fresh bread. Fresh bread is really good, even if it is store-bought, I must say. It's not as good as homemade, though. I did learn how to make homemade bread, and everybody loves it when I make homemade bread. Maybe I'll do a recipe on um, the Hawaiian sweet rolls. I know that's not an appetizer, but they're so good. Maybe I can find a recipe that uses those buns, maybe like with a ham and cheese sandwich kind of a, a thing. 
I think I'll look into that. Maybe even I'll do it for this fall. That might be a really nice dish. Here's an overhead view of the little pigs in a blanket just out of the oven. I think they're pretty cool now. If you put them in when they're still too hot, the steam from the collective will make it soggy. So you don't want to put them in there when they're way too hot. It'll just become a soggy mess. So you want to make sure that they're almost warm to the touch, about like that. These might be just a little warm, but I have people ready to eat this pretty quick. So they're not going to be sitting in here for very long at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these in the basket here. It really makes quite a lot, actually. Two packages makes, look at this big old bowl of little pigs in a blanket. There's a lot of them in there. You know what I was thinking? I wonder if an egg wash on this would be good. On the package, it doesn't say to do an egg wash, so I didn't do it but I had a thought of doing it. I think the next time I make these, I might do an egg wash on them because they do look a bit matte, you know, like a matte finish, M-A-T-T-E, matte, matte finish. I wonder if I put a little egg wash on there, if they would have a little bit more of a shine to it. I still think they're pretty, but to make them look even more elegant, I don't know if they're elegant. It's pretty rustic. Um, but I think an egg wash might give it a little bit of a, a little more of an, maybe a elegant look. It's pretty casual though. This is a pretty casual snack. It's a finger food. So yeah, it's pretty casual. Okay. I'm going to get this out of the way real quick. Okay. There they are. What do you think about that? I think it's a great dish. And then you can just cover it up like this. It's pretty full. But I think that will keep it warm for quite a while. Oh, I put the one I was going to eat in there. Oh, well, it's just my family tonight. So, all right, I'm going to taste it. You ready? I'm going to dip. I'm going to dip it in the barbecue sauce first. It's really good. You definitely have to like those little smokies though. If you're not a meat eater, you probably wouldn't like this. So now I'm going to dip it in the honey mustard. I think the honey mustard is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Just a little teeny bit of grease. Just one little finger had it. I mean, you think you definitely need a napkin, but they got cooked through. I'll write how long I cooked them for in the recipe below the video. And just keep an eye on it so you don't burn it. But they're really good. 
And you can do all kinds of little dips. This is our sort of family favorite. And this is what I served when we had a Mahjong event. At my house, I had the honey mustard and the barbecue. And I made about this much and it was gone. Everybody really loved it. Give it a try yourself and let me know how it goes. And you know what I was thinking? You could do this same idea with other kinds of fillings. You could put maybe chicken and cream cheese in there. You could put maybe like a ham and cheese and make a little ham and cheese croissant. I might actually do that in the future because they're the perfect little size. I mean, they could be a two bite. I prefer finding a one bite recipe. That's what I'm really searching for, but this is pretty close. So I think I might play with this a little bit. Maybe try the ham and cheese. What do you think about that? If you have any ideas of what kind of fillings could go in here, write it in the comment section. We can make up our own recipes for Mahjong Nosh. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, click subscribe and then click that bell so you get notification of when I post new videos. That way you won't miss out on any recipes that might be good for your next Mahjong event. Between now and the next Mahjong Nash and such, may all your picks be keepers. Oh, it smells so good.